Hello everyone, today we are hosting one of the uh, bomb meet and basketball Super League legend Chuck Davis. Welcome Chuck, how are you? What are you doing the, in these days? Man, I'm great, I'm great. You know, I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia, coaching basketball at a little local college here. And um, yeah, it's, it's a volunteer life. job, right? Uh, yeah, well, it's a part-time job, so I'm not full-time, but uh, it's a part-time, and I also, I'm, I do real estate. I'm a real estate agent. I invest uh -huh. in real estate, so that's what I'm doing. Yeah, uh, I heard uh, you wanted to become an agent after your uh, player career ended. What attracted to you to this career path? Um, just being around basketball, you know what I'm saying? Um... You know, I always felt like there were not a lot of agents who played and kind of, you know, understood that part of the game. Like, you know, and being a, you know, from America, like it's kind of like the end, you know, a lot of, a lot of guys don't have the know-how to go pursue an overseas job. So, you know, I saw some little gap there, but man, like, Ah, uh, you know, I didn't, um, you know, it, I, I messed around with it a little bit, but it wasn't for me. Mm. I, I got it. I completely got it. Uh, we, we started the interview with, uh, with the question from recent past. Let's continue in that way. Uh, you basically retired uh, much earlier than a normal athlete. What was the reason for this? Well, uh, I took, I mean, mostly I took this medication. It was a blood thinner. I had a, a, a blood clot. You know, other players, Chris Bosch, Venus Williams had them um, early in my career. And because of that, I had to take um, a, a blood thinner basically my whole career. And the, the type that I took that made it safe for me to play, it wasn't a lot of research for what it would do to the body long term. So um, mostly that was it, man. Like, you know, I, I played, I think, 11 years. And, um, you know, when I first started, a doctor kind of told me to, you know, keep it around that mark because any damage that this medication might do, you know, I could recover from. But how are you feeling right now? Is everything okay? I feel great, yeah. So, um, you know, I'm, I still take medication, and it's no big deal, you know. Um it's not like a super rare thing. Um, I mean, it was rare that it happened to me so early in my career, but if I'm not, you know, basically it was because of that medication that I stopped. But now, you know, I'm normal. I don't have any health problems. It doesn't affect me pretty much in, in regular life. Um, yeah, I feel great. Yeah, good, good to hear that. I also have a question about the uh, end of your career. A week after you came to Galatasaray, you, I believe you said, uh, my body cannot handle it anymore. Let's mutually break up. Uh, but you didn't give up and you became one of the biggest heroes of the Euro, uh, Euro Cup championship. Uh, can you tell me about those process and what made you to continue to play basketball? Um, you know, when I came to guy, it was more so... I don't think I ever wanted to give up. I'm so grateful that they kind of like was willing to, you know, work with me and get me back in this shape. But I didn't know how hard it would be to come back when everybody else was in perfect shape and you were kind of in mid season, man, like the game was, it, it was like I was moving in slow motion out there. So it really just took me a good month before my body was was ready to kind of play a whole game and move at the speed that I, I needed to. And I really didn't know how hard it would be to come back in, in like mid season. So that was more so of it. It just was, you know, when I got out there and I always had, I had a surgery at a very young age, you know, an ACL, which is common, but, um, you know, I, I hadn't like, prepared the way I should have and like I said like I had to kind of work on you know 
my body to get it back up to speed to to move so fast, you know, like um, but yeah, once I got going, you know, Gal Tessera only played there one year, but man, you know, that's one of my favorite memories of my basketball career. You know, it was great guys and a great run, and you know, I still think about that and miss it. Yeah, uh, you. I believe you once also said that uh, the Euro, Euro Cup championship would be the most significant achievement in your career. Looking back today, do you still think the same way? I think it's the most, uh, you know, it's it's actually winning something. Now, I, I wouldn't call it, it's hard to say the most significant achievement. I guess you can say if, if winning something, if, if winning a championship is you know is, is something that goes down in the record books yes with that being said there are you know a lot of seasons you know i had a couple seasons that bonded when we went to the championship and you know one season where i think we only lost two games where those were also years that i'm super proud of you know what i'm saying like being a, a, a smaller team and, and you know, you know, coming from a team that, that sometimes was in the lower division and lower, you know, um, at the bottom of the league to every year we were, you know, top four. That was that was pretty special and I love that. But yes, that that winning that championship, you know, Having having that run with those guys and, and playing, um, you know that late into the the Euro Cup, it was it was something you can hold on to. It was something that I can tell my kids about. It's something that I can brag about and people can look up. You know, yeah. and um, yeah, it, it was it was it was special. Chuck, you were basically the missing piece of that team, uh, which was truly really a great team. I mean, Eric McCollum was was a score machine. Stefan Lazme was basically a beast. beast. Sinan Güler and other guys too. How do you remember the team, a defense, the atmosphere, and overall? So, I mean, I came for that reason. You know, I really felt like I was... You know, they were good enough where I wouldn't have to carry the load. And I felt like I could bring something that, that they didn't have, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, they it was once I came, you know, I, I, I like I said, I wasn't in shape at first, but I really saw that, man, if I can kind of get it going here, we have some special. I mean, that was a team... And I had one other that I would compare to that, but it was a. I love it when you have five guys who kind of are smart players. You know, not super yes. athletic. Like nobody, you know, Eric. Eric was a scoring machine, but he's he's also not the fastest or best three point shooter. He's just a smart player. You know what I'm saying? So Absolutely. that was a rare t C none, the same things. You know, C none, if you look at him on paper, you'll say, ah, but he's a really smart player that just got the most out of his skill set. Mm -hmm. And that's so what I enjoyed about that year. It was like we had about five or six guys who just like you trusted with with they knew what to do with the ball. They were smart. We didn't make mistakes. We could all like um have a have a positive effect on the game and, and, and affect the game with our brains. And I feel like I was always that kind of player and just to play with other guys like that and see how that could come together and be special, you know, you know, that that's that's why that memory is so fun in my head. Yeah. Uh I mean they wanted to continue with you and you got your rhythm also. But I believe that it would be tough to quit basketball, right? After it, such it, a year, right? It was. It was. It was tough. Um, and like I say, it was mostly with that medication thing. But yeah, I could have 
try to steal one or two more years, but I had a friend who who played in Turkey for a long time. Great career, Erwin Dudley. Um, I always thought about him, you know what I'm saying? Like he started to to kind of get a little those little injuries, you know, and then like I knew how I was. If 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 I got hurt or or had some little injury and my last year wasn't as good as I wanted it to be, I would never stop. So I just felt like, you know, that winning that um Euro League, Euro Cup championship, um, in that great year, it was just the right time. Like it was a time that I could look back at my last year and smile. I always wanted to do that. You know, I ain't wanna come back and, and have some small injury and now I gotta go one more year to make sure I get a good one. You know, that was a good it was a good last year. Yeah, yeah. You were number uh, six or three, and I know the reason behind this. But let me ask for those who don't know why. Uh, why did you wear? Man, I, I, I might mess some people up. Like that's what that was the number they gave me. Like I think I don't know if they had another number, but they got I got there and they said, "Hey, all we got is sixty three. I give it here. Let's go." <laughs> like really. And, um, <laughs> and, <laughs> And, and and I was old by I felt old by the end anyway, so it was a good number. Yeah, but uh, I believe that just a second, uh, the there there was a guy who is from uh, another city, uh, which is Shanlurfa, and the plate of Shanlurfa was. 63. I think they gave it to you because of this, but I knew, uh, I thought that you knew this. This I did. I did. You know what? They did tell me something like this, that it was a special number for this. You know what I'm saying? But I never really thought about that. And, and at that point, you know, I didn't much care. I just wanted to play. Okay, okay. And uh, let's go, go back to your, uh, to the earlier periods of your, your career as an Alabama graduate, you started your professional career in Turkey as well and played basically your entire career in Turkey except one year in Belgium. Uh, your first team was in uh, Ankara, uh, Chuck. It was uh, Ted Kolejdler and uh, Marcus Green was also from that team. And he was uh, transferred to Fenerbahce and played in the EuroLeague. And he was a, a, basically the shortest player who ever played in EuroLeague. And, but your chemistry was great. I remember those times. And what do you think about that duo? Man, I mean, look, Eric Eric was a great point guard. And I played with others. But Marcus Green is still to this day, I think, in my whole career, Oh, the best point guard I played with, man. Like, he he was special, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, he was small, but he had unlimited range. And if you were open, he was going to find you. There was no better place for a young Chuck Davis to go to than to play with a point guard like Mark Green. He yeah, made exactly my, I was going to tell you. <laughs> yeah, he, he made my adjustment to my first year being pro so easy. Like I have to credit so much of that year to him. And 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 actually I struggled the next year when I went to Belgium. Like, you know, because yo, he made it easy. You know, he told me where to be, where to go. And if I was open, he was going to find me. He told me when to shoot, you know, a uh, 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 much of um, – and I think we had a, like, unexpected good year there. But much of that is because of him, man. He 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 he, he really was. And like I say, I still consider him um, the best pure point guard. You know what I'm saying? I played with other players who were more scorers or, or, or better at certain things, but just a pure – point guard who who has point guard vision he was the best yeah and you mentioned Erin Dudley another graduate uh from Alabama do you guys close to each other I mean he was incredible and I would easily put him uh one of the greatest player in basketball Super League history oh yeah oh yeah we still talk we talk um 
we talk probably twice a month. Um, he coaches basketball down at, at our university, like where we went to school at Alabama. Um, we're good friends. We were good friends the whole time. I mean, he was one of the reasons that I was comfortable coming to Turkey, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and playing there. So, yeah, so we still talk, still close friends. Great to hear that. And let's get back to your career also. You played a year in Petkim, Petkim Sport, and after that, Baumit story began. Uh, you became one of the legendary players in Baumit history also. Do you still talk to people there? Yes. Um, I still talk to uh, a, a lot of people from Baumit and still have a lot of friends, you know. Um, Coach Orhun, like, is a, I consider him one of my closest friends in the world. I still come to Turkey and visit, um, you know, my friend, um, the trainer, John. We still talk. The general manager, tour guy. I don't know tour guy's last name, but we talk on the internet. Yeah, Ingus, um, he was recently in uh, Azerbaijan, works there. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yes. So, yeah, I still talk to a lot of people at Bombay. I really consider them, you know, a, a, a extended family. Um, and, and the players also, you know, me and the, the, the players, all the players that played there during that time, we're pretty good friends. We still talk pretty regularly. Like, it, it really was. You know, I played there, I don't know, five years. So, um. You know, I, I I grew to love those guys. Even some of the Turkish guys, EZ, um, I still talk to on the internet every once in a while. Shafak, um, you know, I, I I still talk to these guys when I get a chance, and when I come to Turkey, I try to see them. Yeah, what was your reaction uh, when you found out Bamit shut down the basketball activities? <sighs> I mean, I was really sad, man. Like, um, you know, that was. You know, it was a small city, but I don't really people think mm. people knew how special it was, especially to that place. You know, that team meant a lot to that city. Like when we walked around, people were proud um, of the basketball team. And, you know, soccer is the main sport in Turkey, but that place really like, you know, revolved around that club, not just the team, you know. Um, I get most sad not about the professional team, but by the by the junior team and the, the kids that um they help. You know, every year we went to schools like um it was really like the only place I've been where it was really like a family, and, and they that's how they treated it. And you know, yeah, I was sad. I was sad um to see it go, but you know, I understand. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned kids, but let me ask you about one kid. Alperen Şengül was there during your mm -hmm. time. Do you remember him? I mean, he was so young or any story with him. You know, he signed a big contract yesterday. Really? Yeah, five years, $185 million dollars. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I enjoy, like, like I remember a lot of young guys um, from Turkey, and yes, I do kind of remember him, you know, around, and of course, he's the kid that you just grab and hug, like, you know, I don't remember a lot about him playing, he was so young, but, um, you know, it's crazy, like, I was American, but I played in Turkey so long that When I see these kids playing in the NBA, you know what I'm saying? I kind of feel like proud to say, hey, you know what I'm saying? That young guy, like he was barely getting in the game when I was over there. And look at him now, you know, it's a few guys in the NBA now that, that including him that I'm sure I'm going to watch um, that really, you know what I'm saying? Like I feel like a little bit of uh, 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 joy when I see them playing, you know? Yeah. Uh Chuck, you mentioned that uh, one year we had only two, three losses. I don't know, you you were talking about your uh, high school days or professional level, I mean, bound mid-season. Did you 
mean the bombed season when you mentioned yeah trade? yeah it was bombed the year um yeah you uh, that's why i uh, that's what i was going to ask actually you had a great season with coach etudis and for the mm -hmm. first time in club history bombed finished the league in the first place but Galatasaray eliminated you. I mean, do you think that you would win that series if you would play it again? Well, I, I think we would have won that series if we didn't have a couple bad injuries. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, and Galatasaray was a good team, but we beat them every time during the regular season. We really didn't have much competition that year in the regular season. Like, um, I think even one of the two games we lost, we just we we, we rested our guys. So um, that was a year that was e Coach E2 this first year. I do think he was way too hard on us in practice. And by the end of the year, I I think I put I had a hamstring injury in the playoffs. I I missed two games. I tried to play the last game. I, I wasn't good. Our point guard EJ Rowland he was hurt. Um, Okay, two you best know, players on the on the team. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He played, but um, you know, he wasn't healthy. And I honestly, you know, if we were healthy, we definitely would have won that won a championship that year. Like, uh, we were that good, like that. Yeah, it was. I, like I think that team might be machine. better than. The, yeah, I think that team might be better than the Galatasaray team that that won. We won the um. Euro Cup championship with like it was that we were that good like we were dominant yeah and you worked with it to this who won two Euro League championship after that you worked with Ergin Ataman who won back to back Euro League championship three Euro League championship actually in total so do you consider yourself lucky to work with those legends absolutely Absolutely. Uh, Etudis, you know, I'm getting into coaching now. And, you know, I have those two coaches and I have to say Orhun, uh, Inu, like I learned, I was always a student of the game. So I thought I knew a lot about, you know, um, basketball. But those three guys probably taught me 70% of, of my knowledge on basketball and even coaching now, a lot of my philosophy comes from the combination of the three of them. They were very different. Um, you know, Etudas was probably the the, the best kind of like X and, and O's guy. He could draw up a play off the top of his head, you know, kind of guy. And those other guys like were great with relationships and just motivation. Like, um, So, yeah, I do, you know, I do. And, you know, it was, it, 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 I wouldn't say I didn't have much of a choice with e Tudis. I didn't know him very well. But the other two guys, you know, I knew, and I knew they were great coaches, and I knew they, you know, were great people. And, you know, sometimes, like, that's who gets the most out of their guys. You know what I'm saying? The person who you know cares about you. And both of those guys did. Yeah. And we talk about a lot of good things, but I want to ask you about one more name. Who is Zoran Lukic? And I heard you weren't on good terms with him. How do you remember him? The coach? Yeah. Um, no, we weren't on bad terms. Um, I wouldn't say that. Look, he 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 came in his defense, he came into a rough situation. Um, I think he had been used to coaching, you know, younger guys in, in, in Russia. And he came into a team where a lot of our guys had been there for four or five years. You know what I'm saying? And, like, we did things a certain way. And he came in and, and he wanted to, of course, as he should, put his, his, his kind of stamp on it. And... You know, when you're used to coaching a much younger team, you, you do things a little differently. And honestly, like, man, I don't hate the guy. I don't think he hated me. It just it was obvious that at that time, the way he wanted to do things like me and, and probably a couple of the older guys just 
You know, we, we, we didn't adapt to that well. So we bumped heads a little bit, but, um, you know, ultimately, man, that happens, you know, that, that happens in sports. Like, you know, we ended up, I think, you know, our, our another coach ended up taking over and doing a great job that year. But I just think it was a bad fit. He wasn't a bad coach. Didn't consider him a bad guy. It just was a, it wasn't a great fit. Mm-hmm. Got it. Like, I, I, I'm not, luckily, I don't feel like, there's a person in this world that 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 I hate or or they hate me. Right. And I, you know what I'm saying? I don't think Zora, you know, he thinks about that. But, you know, I think there was a a, a mutual world respect there. And I think we both kind of knew. And we talked even that year. We talked like, bro, we're going to have to make this work. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. we're going to have to make this. You know, that happens in sports where you don't get to kind of choose – who your coach is or who your player is sometimes and you kind of have to make it work. And I think there was a mutual respect there. Yeah. And Chuck, I have to be honest with you, man, as a basketball talent, I always thought that you should play at the highest level in Europe, which is EuroLeague. Why didn't you choose that path? I mean, you could have been uh, a player who made a difference at the highest level in Europe. I mean, honestly, you know, I had a unique game for Europe, you know, and I knew Absolutely, that. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and that one year in Belgium, it kind of taught me that I needed to make sure a coach knew how to use me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It wasn't a horrible year in Belgium, but I didn't fit well into that system. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And when I looked at a lot of Euro League teams, it was kind of the same. You know, they wanted the four man to stand behind the three point line and shoot threes. Um, you know, it wasn't a lot of one on one, and that was kind of my strength. I was a a one on one from the top of the key, one on one in the post. Um, and you know, I could shoot a, shoot the three a little bit, but that wasn't my main game. Um. And, and 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 I was always a safe guy. So when I found a a couple, you know, when I got to know Turkey and how they played and found the coaches who I saw that they can adapt their game to kind of use a unique player like me, I kind of wanted to stay in that system, um, be safe. You know, I saw a lot of guys who went chase Euro League and chase more money and then play horrible and end up probably costing themselves money and enjoyment of the game, which was always big to me over the course of their careers. And I just didn't want to be that guy. You know, I found a spot in Bombit that, man, we had a good thing going on. Um, I loved my coach. Like I say, still to this day, Orhon is, is one of my closest friends. And, um, I just think I wanted to be safe. You know, I wanted to be safe and, and stay in a place that I knew they 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 knew me and knew how to use me. Yeah, it's understandable. But let me ask this. Did you get any offer from EuroLeague during your Bambit career? Um, I do. I, I did. Um, If you don't mind, may I ask really, from who? It was mostly Russian teams. Um, You know, during my time... Turkey and Russia were probably like the the two of the the best leagues and, and highest paid leagues, and it was always Russian teams. Mm-hmm. Um, where I, I ain't gonna say it was always Russian teams that I got offers from, but they were always the teams that that made competitive offers to to you know similar money that I was making. Um, lo- I think Locomotive um offered me one year um. I honestly don't remember a lot of them because of the weather. I didn't want to play in Russia and Russia would have had, you know, they would have had to pay me a lot more than I was making in Turkey for me to go to Russia. But it was, it was three or four times during my career at Bombit. And, you know, when I went to Galatasaray, my old coach from Belgium wanted me to come to Jerusalem. I think he was at to play and I kind of chose Galatasaray just because I knew them and it was it was safer. Um, but yeah, it was always Russian teams. I think Locomotive would win. I think St. Petersburg offered me 
um, one time. Those are the two teams that I kind of remember. Yeah, I always, this is just an opinion, but I always thought like you would fit Maccabi Tel Aviv because they were using uh, power forwards. Maccabi like offered me one time, Maccabi <laughs> offered me a contract. Yes, they did. I, it's crazy that I forgot that. But, you know, Maccabi, you know, it's a money thing. You know, Maccabi, as good as they were, they didn't pay as well as... Um, what? Are you serious? I mean, I, I, I'm probably telling secrets here, but yeah, I would, it wasn't it wasn't as good as I was being paid in money. Okay, they probably probably if they they would be mad at me for saying, but <laughs> no, it wasn't as um it wasn't it wasn't as good as it was in Bombay. And I mean, it wasn't it wasn't far off, but you know that was more so. I think they made an offer to say, "Hey, we're Maccabi, um, Tel Aviv," you know. Come here, enjoy the enjoy the city, enjoy playing Euro League, and yeah, I just yeah. wasn't that guy. You know what I'm saying? I like I, I was fine with bumming, and and you know I was gonna go where I could make the most money. You know I wasn't gonna leave there and go to somewhere that I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, uh, as far as I see in your uh, social media post, you call Turkey your second home, and you were in Turkey this summer too. Do you own a place in Turkey? Or just for uh, no, okay. no, no. I wish, I wish. You know, I thought about it a uh, pl plenty of times. Um, you know, even while I was there, but I don't own a place there. But I have so many friends there, man. I have a place to stay. You know, yeah. so um, yeah, yeah. I love Turkey. I try to come back. I try to come back every other year. It doesn't always happen like that, but um. Yeah, I really do. You know what I'm saying? Like, like when I'm when I'm here, I start fiending for my my favorite Turkish foods, Iskandar and, 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 and you know, um, Adana kebab, and and I really have to. I can't I can't wait to come back. Yeah. So did you, did you meet with Orhanene? Yes. Yes. Definitely met with him. Spent most of the time with with with, with Orhan and um. Yeah. You know, like I say, I, I always make sure. Like I say, that's one of my closest friends um, yeah. in the world. So, you know, kind of, um, I don't so, know, you know. So he's the best coach you have ever worked with? Say that again. So is he the best coach you have ever worked with? Definitely. Definitely. Um, I mean, he, he's the... There are other coaches who were better at certain things, but the combination that he had, and I think the biggest thing about coaching is motivation, and he's definitely the best, you know what I'm saying, motivated. Like, he knew, um, you know, he was, he, was the, he was a realistic guy. He wasn't an easy coach. He wasn't like, but he knew, you knew that he cared about you, and he was going to do the combination of things that were good for you and the team. Like, and you, you kind of, some about him let you know, like, like, like he cared. And there, that is nothing better to get a player to run through a wall for you than to know, you know what I'm saying? You care. Like, and, and that's what he was best at. Yeah. So let me ask this, who's the best player you have ever played with? Ooh, that's a tough question. Yeah. That's a really tough question. If you're having a very, very Sammy. hard time, you could say top three, maybe. Sammy Mahea. Sammy Mahea. Great I, honestly, I honestly think Sammy Mahea is probably... I'll probably consider him the best Um. Just cause he could do everything, you know what I'm saying. I I, I think I think he probably should have been the NBA big point guard. I mean, he wasn't a point, but could play the point guard at his size. Um, Eric McCullum was definitely up there. He definitely would be in the top three. Um, I I mean, the third place. You know, Blake at Galatasaray, Keith Simmons at Bonvit, EJ Rowland. I think they all, Lance Williams even, like, I think after them, that third place slot can go to a Marcus Green. Like, you know, I would say Marcus Green is the, 
the third. The third. But, but you know, that spot is really close once you get yeah. to third. You said that, uh, I mean, you just said that uh, Sami Mejia should have been in the NBA, but I also think the same way for Irvin Dudley. If he was like six centimeters taller, Absolutely. he would have been in the NBA easily and he would have stayed there for his entire career, maybe. Absolutely. Ex extraordinary yeah. player, yeah. Uh, you're 100% right. Just just a, a little bit taller, he would have been in the NBA instead. He also, I mean, he had a very significant – he and I both had some bad luck our final year in college where he had a very significant knee injury. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, Erwin had a knee injury that some people didn't think he would be able to play again. So um, that was also a reason that he, he didn't make it to the Like in your story uh, with Marcus Green, he was he had the point guard uh, who is great for young players. Tutkoacik, remember him? Yes, pick and roll player. So, yeah. Yeah. Chuck, uh, who was the best player you had the most challenging challenging time defending? You know, I was a great defender, man, so I'm going to say I locked up everybody pretty easily, but I'm not. <laughs> that's uh, – most people are not going to remember this guy, and, and and I might butcher his name, but he played for Galatasaray when I first kind of came over, my first, you know, three or four years, Shumper. Preston Shumper? Yes. Ah. So, look. I'm not going to say he was the best player I played against, but he was definitely gave me the most problems. He yeah, just I could understand, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like I was a guy who kind of, you know, I was a good one-on-one -on -one defender and I could kind of play some good help defense and block some shots, but he shot the ball like a two guard. So it's like I always had to know what he where he was, and any time you left him open, he was going to make the shot. So I used to hate playing him, and, and, and he shoot the he shoot very high length, you know. Yes, it was hard to yes. stop. That's yes, it. yes, yes. That was the guy where you know most other people, if they had a good game, it was a good game. It, it wasn't something I had to worry about for next game. I'll get him next game. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that was a guy when we played, I'm like, oh my God. Like, I got to know where he is at all times. I can't leave him. Like, I wasn't, I'm not used to playing like that. <laughs> I hated playing. Uh, who was the toughest defender you faced with? Man, I'm, and, and, and people, people who know me gonna laugh if they see this, but I'm so bad with names. Um, He was, My, the worst kind of defender for me was a guy who was smaller than me and strong. Like, so I hated those kind of guys. Karsheka had one that I don't know his – I can't remember his name right Turkish now. Turkish or foreigner? I think he was a foreigner, but I think he played in Spain for a long time. I think he played for Grand Canaria for a long time. And I played him a lot. We played Grand Canaria a lot. In the in the Euro um, Cup, and and then he ended up. I feel like he went to Karsheka, but he was definitely. I hated playing against him. Like, I'm uh, I'm checking right now. Uh, he was power forward, right? He was a power forward, probably undersized, probably about six five, six six, strong guy, could shoot it, but. He was he was probably uh could have been uh Juan Palacios. I think that's him. Really? I uh, think that's him. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Like um yeah. That's smaller I mean, than you, yeah. Three centers. Yeah, just... it might it might sound weird, but like, you know what I'm saying? I was a good post player, like he got a better center of gravity. Like, I can't back him down because, you know what I'm saying? Like, he pushing at my knees. Like, um, he was quicker than me because he was smaller than me. So, I couldn't take him one-on-one. -on -one. Like, 
that was I, I any guy that kind of size and that type gave me problems and he was a great defender. Yeah. Chuck, that's all from my side. And it man. was a pleasure to talk with you, man. Uh many I, things again. I enjoyed this, man. I'm kind of sad it's over. I appreciate this. And you did a great job, man. I thank you. You kind of made my day, you know, bringing up these memories and thinking about my old playing days and shit. I, I'll say that I, I tell people all the time, man, it goes quick, you know? Yeah. It goes quick, man. So, you know, bringing up, I'm going to call a few people now. I'm about to call Sammy and Keith and because and, 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 and he brought back a lot of good memories. Yeah. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Thank you, bro. Same.